Where's the goddamn sink? Hello everyone, this is David Stark from WatcherPass.com, your website for movie news, reviews, interviews, deals, and recommendations. Today we're joined by Mr. Zach Knighton, who you might have known for his role in Happy Endings. Uh, today we get to talk to him about his role as Duncan in the new horror western mashup, The Pale Door, releasing in digital, on demand, and in theaters on August 21st. Hello. Hello, Zachary. This is uh, David Stark from WatcherPass.com. Thank you for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, I guess, you know, we only got you for a little bit, so I'll, I'll jump right into the questions. Uh, it seems like cool. your, it seems like in your career, you've had kind of a recurring interest in horror. You, you, you had roles in The Hitcher, and I guess, according to IMDb, Santa Clarita died as a horror movie, but I thought that was more kind of in the horror comedy. Um, you know, th this is a return to horror. Does acting in horror movies have an appeal to you? Was there something about this film that drew you? You know, uh, I, I've always been a big fan of horror films. Um, ever since I was a kid, Halloween's like one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, I, I uh, and as you said, I did do uh, did the Hitcher remake, which the original Hitcher was a great. I was a huge fan of that movie too, and I love westerns. So um, I've always wanted to do a western. I've always been a fan. I grew up watching westerns. I grew up watching The Rifleman and you know, Bonanza with my dad and all these TV shows and, uh, and I've never done one. So when, um, Noah Segan said, Hey, I'm doing this movie. My friend is directing it. You should read it. He sent me the script and I just loved it. And, um, and I met with Aaron Kuntz and uh, the rest is history. So yeah, I definitely have a great interest in both genres and I love the idea of mixing the two. I, so yeah, that was my next question was about Western, so that, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I also really loved the the idea of mixing them. It's one of those that you don't see much, but kind of when I saw it on screen, I was like, this this makes perfect sense. Having Western and horror, you have them isolated. They don't have technology. It kind of is a perfect little mashup for it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's cool. Uh, so I, I loved your character, um, but for reasons that you know we won't go into, he, he wasn't on the screen that much. Is, is there a version where... Uh, he was, or is that, was that just kind of always the way that the role was meant to, to be in the film? Um, that's always the way that the role was meant to be in the film. You know, originally I was going to play uh, Bill Sage's character, um, and uh, the scheduling was such that, um, you know, there was some issues with getting started. I think there were some tornadoes that bumped the movie back a couple weeks, and uh, and I had previous uh, uh schedule that I had to keep to. So my window was closing to be able to do the movie. And at one point it looked like I wasn't going to be able to do the movie at all. And, um, they, uh, we basically worked out a way to switch roles where I went from, uh, Bill Sage's character to, uh, to play. And then I went to play Duncan and, uh, the shooting schedule worked out. So the role then became my role. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, that's fantastic. You know, one thing I, I, my next question was, you know, you and um, your brother, Jake, who's played by David Druid, uh, you have very natural chemistry. And, and, you know, I guess, how did you establish that? And, and the fact that you switched over to Duncan so quickly, you know, so, I guess, so abruptly, how did you go about establishing that kind of like brotherly rapport? Well, um, I'm a fan of Devin Druid. I, I really like his work in 13 Reasons Why. And, um, you know, I also, I look at the guy, I'm like, oh, yeah, we could definitely be brothers. And, um, <laughs> you know, we, we just sort of all flew out to Oklahoma quickly, and, and we're all staying in the same hotel, and we were in not even, you know, we were in this little town even outside of Tulsa, so we didn't have, there wasn't much to do but all hang out together. So we developed a quick rapport, and um, we had a great, we mainly were just there to make that movie. So, we got to work in together pretty quickly and uh yeah i think i can't wait i haven't seen it yet but i'm excited to see uh how the chemistry translates to the screen uh it's it's great but you know don't take my word for it i'm sure you'll see it soon um 
you know, with a movie that's going, you know, I guess on on demand, it's going to theaters and on demand uh, on August 21st. You know, one thing I was interested in is seeing just more scenes with the characters. I really liked them and I liked seeing their interactions. Do you know, if, are there deleted scenes that we might get later on or there might be, there be a way to show us uh, additional footage from this film? You know, you'd ha that's probably more of a question for Aaron, the director, because I haven't seen the film yet, so I don't know what made the movie uh, or what hasn't made the movie. I do know we shot quite a bit, and um, I'm sure, you know, Aaron is a very thorough guy, so I'm sure anything that he shot will be available to be seen, a, a, and if it didn't make the movie, I'm sure he'll figure out a way to uh, release that additional footage. And uh, I guess, how did you go about, you know, since you, you've always loved Westerns, but this is, I think, your first Western, how did you go about kind of preparing for that? Did you go out riding a horse? Did you just shoot a gun? Is there? <laughs> well, I definitely went through the, uh, you know, I went through the canon of great Westerns uh, as I could. I have a new baby, so, I, you know, watching oh, movies these days is very difficult to do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, uh I watched a couple movies and then I just wanted to get out there and it wasn't until I started to work with the uh, designer or the costume designer and start to put those clothes on, start to work with the armor and start to get a little gun play that you feel like you're adding some layers. I knew emotionally what I wanted to do with the character, but uh, getting those, uh, you know, we had a great costume designer and we had great uh, gun play and, and it's just, you know, once you start putting that stuff on top, whatever emotional truth you want to bring to the character, it really kind of the work starts to do itself for you a little bit, you know? It's very easy to get into that role. Um, so we only have mm -hmm. a few more minutes, so I wanted to switch to, I call them the lightning round. It's just questions that I have about your character or characters that were in there, and I want to see how close you are to the, the characters that are portrayed on the film. Uh, so I guess before preparing for this role, had you ever ridden a horse? Yes. All right. uh, feel free to and answer you, as much. You want, is, this a, is this a lightning round answer to, or can I elaborate? <laughs> uh, answer as much or as little as you want. It's, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're fast, but feel free to well, elaborate. I, I have ridden horses. I did a play in college. It sort of started my career called Equus. And um, uh, that play, I, I, getting ready for that show, I was riding a lot of horses. So that was, that was the last time I had ridden a horse before coming out to uh, – to do the pale door. Awesome. Uh, had you ever fired a revolver? Is that, did you do that as well for the, the play? I've never, I, you know, I fired guns before and on the television show uh, that I do now, I fire guns all the time, but they're sort of always the latest and greatest in whatever technology. So no, this was the first time I, I fired a revolver. You ever boarded a train? Either I'm sorry. Or, have you ever boarded a train either stopped or moving? <laughs> uh, I've never uh, stopped a moving train before. That was certainly a first. In fact, I think that that was the first time I've ever worked with a train. You know, uh, pretty cool. Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, the train was an excellent co-star. It was. It was a beautiful train. Uh, what's your favorite what? horror movie? Oh man, God, that goes. That's a deep cut. That's a deep, deep, deep cut. I, I'm just going to give you a couple of, uh, that really influenced me, but I, I, I would say if I had to say one favorite, it would be Halloween. But the thing, you know, the original, the thing is, is really, that one really gets, gets me going. And, and then you're breaking off into genre, you know, alien is alien, a horror film and sci-fi. I don't know, you know, but I would say Halloween, the first Halloween, if I had to say one, that's the one. Perfect. Um, so it also was released on my birthday, incidentally. Oh, well, that's, I was that's poetic. <laughs> uh, one of the characters <laughs> in your gang says that she's more of a bourbon girl. What's your go-to drink? I'm sorry. I must be having a little. What was the question? One of the characters in the film says that she's a bourbon girl. What's your go-to drink? Oh, God. My go-to drink it would be bourbon if I didn't have to be on TV. And because I'm on TV, it's uh, vodka. Awesome. And uh, your character had a lucky bandana. Do you have uh, any sort of good luck charm? Um, you know, I, I always feel naked without my wedding rings. Not to sound cheesy, but it's true. I like having that. I don't like going out into the world without my wedding ring on. Whether that's a sign of my devotion to my wife or just some superstition, I'm not sure. But definitely my wedding ring is my little good luck charm. I'm going to say it's because you're a, great, a good person, so uh, we'll go with that. And uh, <laughs> I'll take it. 
is your beard longer now in quarantine or was it longer during shooting the uh shooting the, the movie wow great question my beard got that was the definitely the longest and most ungroomed beard i ever had <laughs> doing the movie my beard did get very long uh during quarantine and then i did we did an episode a quarantine episode of happy endings this tv show that i used to do and I had to do a shave a goatee for that episode. So the quarantine beard would be glorious right now if I didn't have to shave. I'm basically back to 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 the last longest beard I had. Uh, but man, it would be so long right now if I didn't have to shave to shoot a quarantine episode of TV. Oh, keep it keep it going. I, I think uh, I think Dave coming back with a giant beard would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess if we, if we have a little bit more time, what's your favorite Western movie? Favorite Western? I mean, I guess I would have to say The Unforgiven, um, but or maybe it's just Unforgiven. But I also love all the '50s and '60s uh, Western TV shows like The Rifleman and Bonanza. I mean, I, I still put The Rifleman on on Saturday mornings when I'm making my coffee. It's, it's, it's on every Saturday on like, I don't know if it's AMC or just like one of those like country music channel, you know, something, some weird channel, but I just, I, I love that weird black and white, you know, old Hollywood movie set once upon a time in Hollywood type of Western. It's just, it just gets me every time. It's a good way to Wait, get one more day. Okay, perfect. Um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, now, now that this is done, what's next? Are you going to go back to horror and Western or are you, uh, you switching on to something else? Well, I'm back in Hawaii. We're about to re- start shooting uh, Magnum PI season three. So I'm going to do, do some TV for a little while. And, um, you know, I would love to make another movie. I was talking to Aaron Koontz about actually directing a short that I wrote. Um, so hopefully we can get back to talks about that and go out to Austin, Texas and, do this little horror film that I want to do, but um, yeah, mainly trying to kind of transition into some directing. I might do some episodes of Magnum and um, you know, some commercials and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of as fluid, you know, this whole thing changed me. So I'm, I'm just going to be uh, as fluid as I can be during these new times. That, that sounds like a fantastic plan. I don't know if you've checked out, uh, there's a movie called host on shutter where it was all made during quarantine. It was kind of a shorter shoot so maybe that's uh that's something that you could do as well make your short into like a short okay. uh, episode Host. i'll check it out yeah well thank you so yeah. much for your time thanks, thanks for uh thanks for answering and, and congrats on being a new dad and thank you for joining while you've got a, a new baby i know that must have been difficult <laughs> all right thanks so much for talking to you thank you so much That was Zachary Knighton from the horror Western movie, The Pale Door. It releases in theaters and on demand and digital on August 21st. It's a horror Western mashup. It's something that you don't really see that much. And as you heard from Zach, it's uh, his first time in a Western, but he does a fantastic job. If you want to check him out and the rest of the cast and see what happens, check it out on August 21st. If you like this interview and you want to see more from us, please like and subscribe. The information is at the end of this video and it's also in the description. Uh, It helps us out a lot. It'll it'll help make sure that these videos keep coming and come straight to you. Uh, And as always, please check out watcherpass.com for all your movie news, reviews, interviews, deals, and recommendations. Thank you.